my channel. Today I'm so excited because it's almost spring so I feel like I should go ahead and upload a video about travel hacks and travel tips and today I'm going to show you guys how to travel for cheap and how to save money on your spring break travel vacation. And before we get into the video comment below what you plan on doing for spring break or where you're planning to travel and also give this video a thumbs up if you like this kind of content. Please research where you're going. So for instance, let's say if you're going to um, Miami, that's a place where it's really popular for spring break. So of course the tickets are going to be a little higher. So you know, if you know what your budget is ahead of time, you could like search and see which months are cheaper or which weeks. But research where you want to go, research the amenities that they have or the attractions, the hotels and the flights most importantly because that's where you're going to be like for the majority of the time. Also, you might get a chance to save money or experience um, a better time because they might have a certain event going on. Like for instance, Las Vegas, they have like festivals and stuff like that. So always do your research first on where you're going. So for flights, I have always checked Google Flights. Google Flights is the most accurate place to go for comparing all of the airlines. Like you don't have to worry about doing cheaptravel.com because a lot of time they do like a bunch of other pop-up videos and stuff like that. I don't have time for that. So when you go to Google Flights, it'll have like a menu. So you can put in where you already are and then you can go to the next tab and see places in general. So they'll give you like places like Florida, they'll give you the top cities in Florida to visit or other recommendations. You can use that tool or you can just put in where you're going to, let's say New York. And then they'll ask you to select the airports. And normally by default, they'll automatically select all area airports. So for instance, let's say that a ticket at LaGuardia is $300, but at the Newark, um, New Jersey um, airport, it's like $200. So you can save $100 like that. So they'll also compare all of the prices of the flights except for Southwest because Southwest is their own little entity. So you can go straight to their site for that. But for the main carriers and like Allegiant, and Frontier, they have dirt cheap tickets. When I flew to um, Vegas, my flight was $75 round trip. And I stayed at the Flamingo, which is kind of like, it is expensive, but I, I had AAA, so I found a discount there. And I, I it also shows you the exact days that are cheaper. So for instance, like if you fly a day or two earlier, like if, instead of doing like Friday to Sunday, which is normally more expensive for most cities, you can, opt to go on let's say Thursday and come back on a Monday or do Monday through Wednesday or Monday through Thursday. Those are the most cheapest in the summer and the spring because it's the weekday. Also try Skyscanner. Skyscanner is a pretty good tool. It's kind of like Pomelo and it shows you the cheap flights for the time being. As another tip you can also book separate especially like when you're going to specific places like for instance one time I literally did a back-to-back -back vacation in 2016. I went to Orlando, Florida and then the, the week before that, I went to Las Vegas for like three or four days during the week. So what I did was I booked um, a separate ticket. So let's say the round trip is like 350. Well, if you book one flight going on a separate on a different day, let's say a day or two later, that flight may only be like $150 versus paying round trip. And then the second trip coming back could be cheaper. So just always compare the round trip versus the one way tickets because sometimes certain days are more expensive and you can't avoid that. The same goes for hotels. Like if Friday nights are the most expensive for hotels and flights, then obviously, you know, maybe going out on a Thursday and then picking a flight back on uh, a Monday or a Sunday might be cheaper. Now an alternative for you guys who don't like flights like myself, um, it, it is cheaper to do like trains, but let's say like, you know, you live uh, close to like Chicago or like New York and it's not that long of a ride. It's it's pretty fast and the tickets are really cheap, like $50 to sometimes $100. You can always book a separate one-way trip to a city or whatever or whatever country you're in and then fly back if, if the trip is cheaper. I've done that before when I went to a funeral last minute. So always think about other alternative ways to travel. And they also have like mega buses if you're just trying to get out of the town for a little bit and go somewhere like Atlanta from let's say Nashville or St. Louis, they have a mega bus option with like $25 tickets. If you mind, if you don't mind being on, you know, buses with other passengers. So for my first automatic hack is to go to booking.com. 
this is kind of a way to finesse the system because with booking.com they give you um, so place suggestions and then you can look up certain areas, area codes that you want to stay in and also they give you the whole entire expense. They'll compile all the nights and the tax and the resort fees together and then you'll see that total. I like that so much better because I get to know what I'm spending was leaving my debit account, okay? Also, they have um, free cancellation and they also allow for you to not pay anything up front. So let's say that you get paid on the 21st and the trip is actually on the 19th so by the time that you get there and you check in sometimes they might charge you for the first night but you know they charge you for the full fee when you check out so let's say you don't have the money up front but you can pay while you're there if you get you know you know that you're going to have the money there so that's a good thing and also in case something comes up you can cancel for free i believe you can also do discounts so you know you can always enter your discount codes there or you can actually go to the actual website, let's say Hilton Honors, if you have an honors code or something like that, you can try that. But honestly, booking to me is cheaper than doing the Hilton Honors unless you have a lot of points and you have like free night stays. So always compare. And also don't forget AAA.com. If you have a AAA account, you can always use your AAA discount, which is pretty much the same as the Hilton Honors for my, for my experience. So you can go and book through AAA.com and you can also get your flight well, not your, I don't know if you can get your flight, but you can also save on a rental car if you're going to do that. And also, for an alternative, you can try Airbnb. When I moved to New York, I actually stayed in a loft with um, Airbnb because it was much cheaper. What I like about Airbnb is that when you have a group of people or you know multiple people, you can save money like that. And also, it's like your own little home. Now, there's different options if you, it's kind of like Uber, like it's legit. So, you know, the person will meet up and give you the key and you know you can choose to never see them again or you know you can choose for them to come over and you know give you assistance or anything like that and also they do sometimes provide house cleaning for extra fee but you know most of the time it's like your own little spot so for instance um let's say i want to rent out my luxury apartment in that here in dallas i could do that through airbnb and like you can stay in this nice apartment with the building and the amenities for a weekend it's just like staying in a hotel now some other options are you can rent out an entire house, someone's house. So let's say if it's like a group of you guys, you can have the entire house. It'll be clean, it'll have furniture already there, everything will be checked out and nicely. Or you can do one room within a home. Let's say if they have like an outhouse or something like that, you can do that. Or if you're really particular, you just want to do an apartment like in a luxury building, you can do that also. I would recommend you to not get a rental car unless you have to because you have Lyft and Uber which are in every major city and you sometimes the fares are like as cheap as five dollars and you can also carpool with other people that you don't know but I mean you don't have to say much it saves you so much money on um, rental car fees you don't have to worry about getting an accident or anything like that so always think about the alternative Lyft and Uber I prefer Lyft because Lyft gives you the fee up front versus Uber, it can change. And speaking of rental cars, never pick up rental cars at the airport unless you have to because they're going to be much more expensive versus down the street from an airport. Let's say if there's an enterprise, they'll actually come and get you. So you don't have to worry about how you're gonna get there. Also, I never park at the airports. One time I did and it was $25 a day. So what you can do is most major cities have a parking garage or something like that. The one that I always go to is the parking spot. Now, they also have AAA discounts, so I only had to pay $8 a day when I was in Nashville versus $17 a day. And also, they have things where you can park at certain hotels through their shuttle system. So, you can pay online and then park at the park your car at the hotel for like 4 or $5. I do that in St. Louis all the time. So, it's a gated, most of the time the hotels are gated or they have security, so your car is going to be fine. And so, they'll have complimentary shuttles that'll take you to the airport and back to the hotel for 20 you know 24 hours now sometimes they're not 24 hours so you have to make sure that your flights are aligned to the times that they're open but most of the time you can check and see if they're 24 hours a perfect hack that i found you know within the last few years is actually checking in online like this is 2018 you no longer have to have paper boarding passes so for example you can check in on the mobile site let's say americanairlines.com you can just go there put in your um your code for your uh, that's on your confirmation and then check in like that and then you can choose to have your 
boarding passes emailed to you or you can download them from there or you can have them text them to you. So you can download them from your email and the boarding pass will just show up on there. And you can screenshot it so that you'll have it in your camera settings. So when you go up to the people, all you have to do is show them your phone, put it on the little thing and it'll weep and you're done. You don't have to worry about keep, keeping up with paperwork and all that stuff when you're traveling. Also, you can check in and get your seat quicker. So let's say if I have a flight tomorrow at one o'clock. Well, today at one o'clock, I can check in with the app or go on the online mobile site and then I can check in like that. And then I don't have to rush anymore to get to the airport. Last but not least, always search for discounts. Discount promo codes in Google or discounts for certain restaurants or amenities. Also with AAA, AAA does have Six Flags discounts and other discounts like that. So always check for coupons in general. Even soda cans that have uh, amusement park $20 off like when you have a lot of kids or you have a big family that stuff can become expensive So that wraps up today's video. Also thumbs up this video if you found this video helpful Also, I hope you guys have a great summer and spring travel check out my previous videos and see you guys in my next one